was a fascinating guy in a fascinating time because he was, I guess we call him a polymath now, is that the term? I suppose people would call him a polymath, it's true. Because he, he uh, well, there's a list, you know, list in, in the book of, of things that he wrote about uh, or published papers yeah, on. Yeah, actually published on. Air engines, steam engines, optics, gliders, parachutes, bird flight, balloon flight, caterpillar tracks, airships, railways, prosthetics, politics, economics, religion, ballistics, helicopters, and ornithopters. Yes, that's wow. most of it. Wow. And, and sometimes, sometimes <laughs> the same notebook would have things about wheat, and then he'd go into something about uh, how airflow would work. So basically, virtually anything that calls his fancy, he'd make a note about. So he was uh, a rural landowner, so he's very interested in agriculture. And so one day he'd be working out a way of working out uh, what the yield of corn in a particular field might be. And the next day he might see a bird in flight and just note uh, that uh, the form of the wings and the, the body of the bird form a dihedral. And that might be a good way of, of making uh, a flying, an artificial flying machine uh, more stable in the air. And so if you read through the notebooks, and they're pretty hard going because he does... Um, uh, jump from one topic to the next. Uh, these are created over well over 60 years of his life. He was keeping notes uh, that have survived to this day. Um, so you get an idea of what was going on on uh, June the 20th, uh, 1813, and the next entry might be um, August the, the 15th, three years later. And just what happened uh, to catch his interest on any one particular day. But in particular, what he did, he, he used these notebooks to document most of his thoughts on uh, aeroplanes and aerodynamics. There's a silver medallion dated 1799? That's right. With an airplane on it. So, um, Cayley first started thinking about aircraft um, uh, in the early 1790s. Uh, and he uh, got married in 1795 and um, was busy with domestic um, responsibilities. He was taking on these responsibilities as an aristocrat and a landowner. And for some reason, in 1799, he decided to mint his own commemorative medal on his design for an airplane. And uh, this was lost and then refound in the 1920s. Uh, and what it uh, um, illustrates is basically the first ever uh, illustration of a heavier than air uh, flying machine, an aircraft, uh, that would theoretically be capable of flight. Uh, have you tried to build a model of it? I don't think anybody's tried to build this one. There are some um, drawings from Cayley of this model. It probably isn't a practical um, flying vehicle. It's more important um, part of the story was that what Cayley has done in this one image is to express the four basic principles of how you can fly. Uh, the first being that what you need is uh, to separate a lift generating surface from the, the propulsion system, uh, which is illustrated in the, in the picture. Uh, the second is the idea of, of having a cambered wing, this idea of the airflow getting underneath the wing to generate uh, a more efficient lifting force. Uh, and uh, the fourth uh, issue is that you need to control the vehicle while it's in the air. So he came up with a rudimentary uh, elevator and rudder so he could control um, the movement of the nose up and down and the nose left and right so you can control this vehicle in the air. And these basic principles, which every um, uh, thing that flies in a controlled manner has got, have never been expressed in an artificial device and that's what this just does. Looking at the notebooks, um, although the, he's not nearly as good as an artist, it reminded me of da Vinci right yeah. away, who of course had all kinds of inventions for all kinds of things, but there's a big difference between the two of them. Oh, well, for me, is uh, the sketch is a starting place for Cayley. So he, he noted down an idea, and that's kind of encapsulated in the sketch, and then he went on to do something with it, which is it, he built it and then tested it. And if it didn't work, he revised it and built it until it did achieve something practical. Um, da Vinci, fantastic artist, but the process ended at the point where he sketched it, because he didn't build a parachute and he didn't build a helicopter, and he didn't build an ornithopter, and if he had, none of them would ever have flown. And this has been proved again and again and again, that although the ideas were good, um, when I was 12, I used to sketch space rockets that go to Mars. I did not invent the space rocket that went to Mars. I merely sketched them. The process of invention is making it work. 
And the difference between, for me, the difference between Da Vinci and Cayley is Cayley did get pretty close to getting most of the ideas that he, he had to work, or else to realise what it was that was stopping it working, like the absence of the internal combustion engine. I guess the reason that Cayley is not a household name uh, is his son didn't much like what Dad did and was kind of embarrassed by it. Yeah, his son, uh, who went on to become Sir Digby, the, uh, the seventh baronet of Brompton, uh, was not um, uh, a particularly uh, intellect. He was a clever guy, but he applied his intellect in, in a different area. He wasn't interested in science. Uh, he certainly wasn't interested in flight and he I think was fantastically embarrassed by his father's work so after his father um, passed away uh, Sir Digby basically dragged all these remnants of flying machines into various barns on the estate and they were unceremoniously uh, cremated in about 1921 when the um, estate was bought out and turned into a hotel What should Cayley be remembered for? He extracted the principle, he actually observed what was there for everybody else to see, he observed it and then extracted the fundamental principle and then went on to test it, to work out why it worked. He knew why an aeroplane flew, not only how it flew, but why it stayed up there and why it wouldn't stay up there. So the one reason he probably didn't get into the air any longer than the very few seconds of those glider flights was that he was sitting around until Renoir invented the internal combustion engine. 50 years later. The book is The Man Who Discovered Flight, George Cayley and the First Airplane. I've been speaking with the author Richard D. and The Man Who Discovered Flight, published by McClelland and Stewart.